Good evening, I'm Oral Gibson. Welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. And uh, this evening I have the leader of the US party, member of parliament, MP Franz Richardson. How are you doing, sir? Happy New Year to you and your family. The happy best. New Year to you, Earl, and Happy New Year to your listeners and your viewers okay. um, out here. So how are things going with you? Well, things are going pretty okay. Um, seen after we went through this huge aftermath of Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. um, my roof went just like everyone else. A lot of people on St. Martin yeah. um, had the experience of what happened during the hurricane. It was something really devastating, I, I would say. Um, and now we are in the rebuilding phase, and we are hoping that all those people who lost their roof, that the insurance companies and government and the different NGOs would assist them and help them with their rebuilding. How do you, how you feel about uh, the rebuilding so far? Well, I think it's going pretty slow, mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, especially from a governmental side. Um, it could have been much faster. Um, I think there was too much bureaucracy, uh, continue to be bureaucracy in how we assist our people. I think these things came about with um, the issues with the Dutch, with the aid, and how do you access the aid um, they have um, really pushed the gold post now to the World Bank um, in order to access the money. But nevertheless, I think we have to put a proper program together mm -hmm. in order for us to deal with the issues of the people. And I think our people are suffering. Our people need help now. Uh, we can't afford to wait, um, let's say, five, six months down the line before they receive help. So I believe that um, the things are moving very slow. But I do hope that um, after this election that is coming, that the possibility of seeing things moving much faster will happen. Now, um, you were in a coalition, everything was going well, and then one day it all crumbled. Well, definitely. I think it's unfortunate, um, Oral, what transpired. Um, we just got a devastation of a hurricane, one, the worst hurricane ever um, to hit, hit St. Martin, mm -hmm. uh, even the history of those um, superstorms. And to see that um, certain politicians used the devastation of a hurricane to bring down a government and to basically put a stalemate of what to happen. I think it, it shows, again, the immaturity of some of the leaders of this country who see self above country um, in such a devastation. Like, there's no way you need to throw down a government. I think we have to put, make sure that we put all hands on deck to see that the country and the rebuilding of this country was the first thing. Um, we even see how long it takes even the government mm. to appoint and get ministers screened to be appointed. Um, not too long ago, a couple of days ago, is when the ministers swore in um, since October 26, um, that a new government was formed, a majority of eight. And today, what, what is next? What, what was going to be the, the solution? And I think it's unfortunate that that happened, that transpired, and use Hurricane Irma as an issue that um, no, nobody wanted to get help to the people. I think that is wrong. You know, people see your party as a new alternative party that has been growing over the years. How do you feel about this election now that's coming in such a difficult time in our history? Yes, it is. It's a difficult time to go out there and ask people for their vote and their support, seeing the devastation. But we believe as a, as a political party and an organization that we have a responsibility to bring good governance and put the right people in place to govern this country. Even though over the last couple of elections we have um, gained more than one seat and some of those individuals decided to declare themselves independent and create even an uneasiness in the country. But we believe as a political party seen over the last year and a half with the appointment of the Minister of Justice and the Minister of mm -hmm. Tourism, the work that was done and to see there was no real controversy coming from USP besides what was used, the, the hurricane, yeah. one of our members um, decided to go along with the Democratic Party to form a new government because of aid. Um, but nevertheless, I believe that um, USP is still strong. USP committed to the people of this country. And we believe in this upcoming election is going to be shown again that USP, with its dynamic young candidates, um, is going to do real good. Mm -hmm. And the people can see that. So how do you feel about uh, the list that you have for this parliamentary election? Well, you know, I'm, I'm very um, upbeat and very proud to see the young candidates, a mix of young professionals and a couple older ones in between that brings the experience, like myself. Um, there's a number of us that um, who have been 
participating in, in elections before. Mm -hmm. There's a number of us who ran business, who understand the dynamics that is out there. And there's some of us who believe that this country has its best years ahead. And as long as the young ones and those young millenniums that they call themselves could understand and see um, what needs to be done and to stay fast and stay focused mm -hmm. with the political party, not jump from one party to the next party, jump ship. Um, this country has a great potential of doing great things for its people. Your number two candidate did a really, really great job uh, as a minister. Well, definitely. I think um, she shocked a lot of people mm -hmm. um, as becoming a, a minister while she came from the private sector. I think that what she brings, the experience of um, running their own business for a number of years, being under her mother and father who have um, the pillar of this country mm -hmm. when it comes to business, and she have learned well. She has taken that savviness into being the ministry. Um, she had a very good team around her. We make sure that the team mm -hmm. that was there that uh, continued to work hard and get the job done on behalf of the ministry. Um, I think it shows at the end of the day that the hard work that was carried out. And um, I believe that um, USP, again, um, will be given that opportunity to be part of any government where that's concerned. Uh, what concerns you most today? Well, one of the things that concerns me most is how do we um, bring back this country? How do we um, offer job opportunities yeah. for our people? How do we build back the homes of our people? How do we bring safety and security um, to this country? Because, you know, sometimes after these de devastating storms and people are unemployed, sometimes a lot of crime um, gets deeply in our community. Those are the things that got me um, very much concerned, that how do we get our people back employed? How do we find opportunities for um, businesses to be able to get the confidence again to rebuild after that sea rib, that looting took place on the island and the devastation that happened? Mm. Um, we as a political party will be um, presenting some, let's say, some relief um, for the people, the business community, and for the people of this country. Uh, we will be unveiling it in the coming days, um, some issues where taxes are concerned, where we are very much seriously um, going to look at how we could implement some of those issues to uh, address the issue of businesses getting the opportunity to come back. Um, those things will be unveiled in, in two days. Um, I will be presenting it to the public and the people of St. Martin, and the people then will have to see from there um, that USP is very serious as a political mm -hmm. party to bring some serious changes, not just um, changes for today, but we need to bring some easement to the community easement to the business population and, and see how we could build back as quick as possible so that we can employ our people. You know, MP Richardson, um, the hurricane season isn't far away. And a lot of people are worried that the hurricane season will start and they won't have their roofs repaired. Well, that is a major concern that we have uh, talked about as a political party, mm -hmm. that um, in five months, June 1st, right around the corner, the hurricane season again, um, Knox. And I think that was unfortunate what the aid money and what they have done with the aid money and the time mm -hmm. that they have put in order for you to be able to access it. Um, they put it to the World Bank and there's a number of things that has to be done before you could even access it. And the uh, French, didn't, the French, side didn't, French government didn't do that? No, they did not. They absolutely did not. And I think um, this was um, willfully done in my book, um, how we was treated as a people. Um, but I believe that at the end of the day we are resilient. And um, we need to put focus on how now um, we as a, as a people mm. and as a government, how much money we intend to spend to help our people to rebuild their roofs and give them that assistance. And I think that should be one of the, the major focuses to make sure that our people, uh -huh. um, every night it rains, every so often it rains. Um, you wonder who roof now is leaking, who's getting wet, who's not having a, a, a dry bedroom, a dry house. Um, those things go through my mind all the time. Um, every day when it, when it rains. So the concern is there, and I do hope that this would be one of the major um, agenda points on the table that all of us, um, whichever political party it is, would put the focus to make sure that those things get done as quick as possible before the next hurricane season come around. The 550 million euros, is it a loan or a gift? Well, that is the, the, the big um, elephant in the room, uh -huh. as you would call it, because no one has ever um, 
state to St. Martin, is it a grant or is it a loan? Um, I believe the majority of it is going to be a loan um, at the end of the day. I don't believe that um, all of it is going to be a grant, for sure not. Um, we have known how the Dutch plays their, their games very well, um, where this is concerned. And I'm saying, um, if we as country St. Martin would have to take, um, let's say, at least three, four hundred million euros um, in loan, that means we are totally choked for a number of years for any projects. And we have to be very careful how we access that money and what we use it for. We have to make sure that we use it for the right things or mm -hmm. to fix our infrastructure, to fix and make sure that homes are there for our people. But we also need to fix the homes that we could withstand earthquake that we see also now. We're having a lot of tremors yeah. um, in our area. And those things, we need to look at our building code. How do we fix it? How do we make the changes to apply in the way the, that the things that is happening to, around in our area with these type of hurricanes and this type of earthquake that we are feeling. And the problem is that once you start to get tough on your building code, then people don't like it either. Well, our people need to understand. Um, we need to look out for the best interest for our people. Um, and I know it sometimes is changes or something hard for us to accept. Mm -hmm. But I think now that we are seeing what is happening in our surroundings uh, with the magnitude of these um, hurricanes and these frequent earthquakes that is um, um, affecting our area, we have no other choice but to implement some strong building codes and to safeguard our people's lives. Because if we don't protect mm -hmm. the safety and security of this country and our people, then we, <laughs> we are doing an unjust to our people. And we need to, of course, um, educate our people the reason why we're introducing changes to our building code and why we need to build this way in order to protect the lives of their, their family members and their homes. Have, have you had a chance to speak with uh, some of the business people, small and even large businesses, hotels, etc. Well, definitely. I, uh, I had a number of conversations with a lot of business people on a daily basis on how do they see St. Martin billing back. One of the challenges for the major hotels is that um, I think some of them, I don't know why, um, on the insured their property, they're not fully insured. So we have a, a challenge there. The issue would be now how do they be able to access money to help rebuild the properties that we have exist today. I think those are the challenges that we see. Um, one of the other challenges that, that we need to find a way how we could get um, the business community to have more confidence um, back again in St. Martin um, mm -hmm. to rebuild, um, to, let's say, hire more people. Those are the challenges um, that we foresee. And then when speaking to them, and they have the interest back in St. Martin, um, their heart is in St. Martin, they want to rebuild. Mm -hmm. But um, those are the things that they are looking at, that um, how do government now play a major role in helping them and assisting them where that's concerned. But, but MP Richardson, you know, uh, business play a major role because no society can, uh, can function without business. And they employ people. Would you be open to the idea of, of government stepping in and, and assisting some of these uh, hotels and so forth? because they're really going to be struggling for a while. Well, definitely. Government has a major role to play. And I think um, there are some ideas that we're going to come up with as a political party we're going to present. Um, I show the business community and everyone will, um, will see that we are serious in order to help them. There must be some breaks given in where um, businesses, will, like, especially major hotels, would be able to build back. Give them that cushion, that opportunity that they would be able to have a breathing space for a number of years based on their investment. Uh, we no longer can't choke the business community no longer mm -hmm. uh, with these high taxes um, where that's concerned. We need to give an easement. We need to find a solution where we could uh, probably approach the central bank and see what amount of uh, money is available that the central bank could assist. We need to look at the local banks and see how much money do they have that they could reinvest back into St. Man at a, yeah. a favorable interest rate. These are things that all of us has to do together in order to bring this economy, bring this country back. Um, and even one area alone um, would have to need help. Even the marine trade, um, we are seeing they're fighting their way back, but there's a lot of work still to be done yeah. in order to bring back the marine trade and how we're going to help them um, to rebuild and to get the message out there that we are rebuilt and we are ready to do business, but not in the way we used to do in the past. We need to find solutions that, let's say when a hurricane is coming, that we don't allow all of these um, boats to remain in the lagoon and then it becomes the same thing like what happened again to make sure that don't happen again. All right, we're going to be right back here with the leader of the Oz Party 
MP Mr. Franz Richardson right here on Earl Gives Live. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas, 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. I'm here speaking with uh, MP. Uh, Mr. Franz Richardson, he is leader of the Earth Party, and uh, they're contesting the February, what, 26th? Yes, yes February 26th. Parliamentary, parliamentary election. election. Right. So this is going to be your, how many? This is my third time um, leading the party mm -hmm. um, for the upcoming election. Okay. Now, you, you have a, um, a slate of um, 19 candidates? Yes. Um, this time, we, we field a, a list of 19 candidates. Mm -hmm. Um, while we could have filled the list, I think we wanted to do a very good selection to present to the public. After seeing so, so many different uh, uh -huh. candidates who continue to leave one political party to the next political party, uh, we have done a very good job, Oral. I'm very proud of the, the candidates that we have. Um, that very young list? Yes, it is. A very, <laughs> very fairly young list. And I think we have the youngest list mm -hmm. in comparison to all the other political parties that um, based on their number of mm -hmm. candidates. Now, um, maybe there might be political parties with smaller numbers <laughs> that maybe would say, well, we have mm -hmm. the youngest candidate. Yeah. But as a political party with, um, with 19 candidates, we have some very dynamic young individuals. Um, uh, number two, we have our minister, uh -huh. who now is there, is a, was the former minister of tourism, economic affairs, Melissa Duncher. Then we have the experienced one, right behind of Maricha Bancampa Milanos. Oh, yeah. Very dynamic young lady in a, who works with me in Parliament, oh, who okay. advises my, my person, um, and the other two MPs, Sylvia Matzo and uh, Shannon Matzo. Bromit, who was there. Oh, they're not coming back? No, um, Matzo will not be coming back. He oh. uh, decided to, to take time out and take care of his personal stuff, and he is 100% oh. behind the party. Okay. And then at number four, we have um, the brilliant young man, Rolanda Bryson, who is the director of the tourism office. Very dynamic. Very dynamic young one. If you go on our Facebook page, uh, you see all the postings, what is taking place. We yeah. have another dynamic young millennium lady, Valia Pantaflet Lake, yeah. um, who's tremendous, who have been being in the tourism um, business for many years, worked with SHD, and then she mm -hmm. was in the cabinet with Romeo at the time when I appointed Romeo Pantaflet. Oh, okay. As minister, she was in the cabinet, and now she's a section head of economic affairs department. And now she um, decided now to present herself mm -hmm. as one of those young candidates also um, to participate in this election. And then we have another good candidate from USP, Paul Lloyd, who's there. Then we got Rishin Elbrug. And then we have Lyndon. Um, Lyndon. Um, everyone knows Lyndon. Who ran the last time. Who the ran the, Lyndon Lewis, who ran the last time. The one who continues to represent the young police officers by okay. himself in court. Um, every week, every other week, you open the newspaper, he wins mm -hmm. a case um, where government is concerned. It is something that we was trying not to continue, but to fix those things for the, the police officers that they don't have to go to court. Um, it is a challenge that we had, but we did so much work, and we are hoping that that work will continue. And then we have um, our good constitutional lady, Lisa Alexander, mm -hmm. who is running number nine. Is she a lawyer? Uh, yes, um, oh. she's running number nine on the list. Um, she have always been there, fully supporting. Uh -huh. And then uh, we have a very good experience um, um, individual, um, Williams, Wilfred, Wilfred Williams, okay, who is no. the director of the prison, mm. along with Stephen Catty. Both of them is the ones who, who are uh, running the prison right now. I've decided uh -huh. to, to sit with him, ask him 
to bring his wealth of experience among the young ones from a, a let's say, a, a prison perspective, seeing that we had the justice mm -hmm. ministry along with Lyndon and Richie Nelbrook. I think what we have done is bring a balance overall, and then we have number 11. Uh, we have Elvis Flanders. Um, this young man is a dynamic young man who ran before with the National Alliance and decided to come with us. Because I had approached him before to come, and then he decided, yeah, he found mm. members uh, would have liked for him to be with the National Alliance, but I believe that um, he fit well with us as a young uh -huh. um, candidate who, who wants to see a lot of things change, especially in the healthcare sector. Um, sitting with him, he explained you the issues that he go through. Mm. His family members go through in the healthcare sector um, that, that needs to be changed. And he goes, when he went to Colombia, he come back, he explained, he said, Frank, if Colombia could do it, why we can't do it? Exactly. Why we can't fix those things? So all in all, overall, um, we have a, a list of 19 candidates who are very dynamic. Um, some of those who ran before, they're there, Matt mm -hmm. Wilson, um, Curtis Thomas, early Charlemagne, and then we have um, my former president, who's now um, number 19, Cecil Nicholas. Oh, okay. um, he wanted to be part of the, the political arena by parcelating himself. So this is the first time he's running? This is the first time he's running. Um, it's something that he was very much interested mm -hmm. in doing. Um, so I am very proud of the list that we, we fielded. Um, it's a young, dynamic um, team, and I believe that this team shows a maturity and believes in where we need to take this country. And I want to give m more young people mm. that opportunity. Because or if we, the, the older politicians who've been there for myself now 14 years, mm. um, if we don't bring up the younger ones and guide them the right way, but not, not allow them to be guided by the outside forces who send them in the wrong direction, that was one of the issues that um, transpired over the last um, couple of elections with two of our candidates who was there. Mm -hmm. um, and now today we, we are very much saying th to those who are coming on board, don't follow in those footsteps. Let's, let's think about country first. Yeah. It's not about I, it's not about me. Um, those are things you're hearing from other politicians who left um, USP and on other political mm -hmm. it's not that All they're talking about on Facebook, ranting all day long, is about I, me, I, <laughs> me, I. And, the country said, man, is not about mm. I and me. It's about how we intend to do things right for our people. And I think that is what um, has uh. always been my motto. Um, let's look at how country f come first before we start talking about I and me. What, what strikes you most about this year campaigning? Because it's not normal. Well, no, it's not. Based on the, the issue that happened, mm. um, the hurricane, we have came out first as a political party and came out with a statement that um, we will not be putting up any big billboards with, with plywood and all those things. We are staying away from that. We might put up some flags or both flags that we normally put up, which we have. We don't mm -hmm. have to go and put them. They're already there. We are staying away from all that. So I think that is the, the, the difference in this election. You're not seeing the big paraphernalia, the big... Um, we have set the trend mm -hmm. from the beginning, and others now have um, realized and have followed in that trend. Um, and there's no way or we could go out there, spend this enormous amount of money, and the people are suffering, people are hurting, but yet politicians out there is, is um, let's say, putting out these expensive um, billboards and banners mm. and all of that. No, I believe no. Let's, um, let's not get involved in that. Let's put the focus in how we intend to um, fix the issues that is at hand, the rebuilding of people's homes and stuff like that. And I think that is a difference um, you're feeling in this election, even though while a lot of people are is saying that they're going to vote. I still believe at the end of the day, or all, they're going to do their democratic right and come out mm. and vote and support, but they will, they will make sure support uh, political parties that seriously has um, the social needs of their people. Looking at, at St. Martin today and, and, and knowing as a businessman yourself and seeing what's happening, um, are, are you concerned about it in my eight, nine months down the road now for some other in terms of families and jo loss of jobs? Well, it? definitely. I think it's, it's a major concern when you see mm -hmm. over the last two months the, the unemployment request, the unemployment yeah. that is taking place effect on this island. Imagine now six months, nine months down the line when we enter the same off season in hurricane season, more of these establishments laying off our people. Mm -hmm. That is a serious challenge. And if we don't correct some of that now in the first six months, the first three, three to six yeah. months, of going into office and offered um, incentives to business to continue holding on to the employment of their people and giving them the opportunity to sustain themselves as longevity and put more money, let's say, in the rebuilding of this country. 
and different segments of the, our community, we need to put focus also there so we can employ more people. I think um, if we don't bring that balance or all, um, six, nine months from now, um, the, it, the repeat of the unemployment mm -hmm. is going to even be worse than what we are seeing. And I think um, one of the things, uh, honestly, or um, people who, who came to St. Martin on a work permit, um, those two we have to look at and probably ask them to go back home until mm -hmm. we rebuild this country and get this country going because the country can't do nothing for those who we allowed to come in here mm -hmm. on work permit but remain here in the country and there's no jobs, but it's more of a burden to the country, more of a burden of the overall um, inhabitants of, yeah. let's say, this, this small island that we have. So even that too, we need to look at and asking those who came on work permits and uh, there's no job, that we will look at you when things build back, yeah. that you will get an opportunity to come back once um, you abide by the rules and regulations of our country. You know, people love this island so much, nobody wants to leave it. But th that's the strangest <laughs> thing or a, a, a devastation like this and a lot of people mm -hmm. who, um, who, let's say, have work permits and resident permit and all that, those are the ones who are choosing to remain mm -hmm. um, and remain here. And you know, sometimes you have to give them um, credit also because maybe some of them believe in St. Man and believe that St. Man has done well for them and they want to stick it out and remain here. Yeah. But I think um, those that who don't have a job those are the ones we need to look at and see how we could work out some arrangement for them to go back home and also to find a way uh, once things get better, uh -huh. uh, things are moving again, that they will be the first to get the opportunity to come back to be part of St. Martin. I think that is something that we could look at. How do you feel about um, French-Dutch cooperation in terms of North and South? Well, I think the, the cooperation is zero. Uh, really? To be honest with you right now, Oral, this is the lowest I've ever seen. Oh the cooperation between the French side and the, the Dutch side. Um, there's nothing happening. Um, what we are seeing um, taking place, you ain't hearing no one speaking out, no one is talking. Um, there was a few meetings happening during the hurricane that the previous government mm -hmm. uh, would have met the, the, the French side and you would have heard about the discussions. Um, now after things change, um, you're not hearing anything. What, what are the rebuilding? What are the infrastructure projects? What are the main projects? Both sides could look at it, look and say, how do we make this this island a much better place for more tourists to come? How are you plan to develop and bring back, let's say, those Mackey um, tour, mm -hmm. tours on the northern side and on the southern side? What we have seen more of the cruise ships now played a major role in saying to the Dutch side, you guys are now more ready than the northern side. We need to use more of the beaches that we never used before yeah. to carry more tours and doing like now today came Sha is bustling down here. The ministry have given eight to ten boots down there on the parking lot to give young entrepreneurs the opportunity to be part of the, the business that is happening down there with mm. the tourists on that area. And then the next big thing is going to come, Oral, how do we fix Maladay issue, the beach of Maladay, for activities for our people? Yeah. That nonsense must stop and need to stop immediately. That is something that we will put focus on because there's no way no, no one could come and tell me and say, man, they owns the beach. Absolutely not. No beach belongs to no private um, an investor, anyone um, where St. Martin is concerned. And that's the most beautiful beach. It is one of the most beautiful beaches on this island that carries the image of this country for mm. many years. And I think um, that is something we need to put a little focus on. And if we need to find investors who's come in and buy up the whole entire mm. conglomerate of it, so be it. But we need to put some fire under the owners of that property and have a serious discussion. Is either you in, you interested in investing in cement, or we, we find investors to bring them in and offer them an ease of incentives in order to invest. And I think that is what uh, we're going to look at and see how we could get that done. Well, MP Richardson, we're just about out of time. We have a minute. It's all yours. The same thing you want to say to the viewers? Well, first of all, Earl, I want to thank you for having me here again. Um, and to the people of St. Martin, while I understand the hurt that all of us is going through, the things that is happening surrounding you, um, we as USP, leader of USP, I'm asking you, the people of St. Martin, honestly, to give us a mandate on February 26 to represent you, the people of St. Martin, in Parliament, to give us that mandate to make sure to bring you the things that you want to see change in this country. We have young candidates, we have older candidates, but more so, you have our trust that the things that we intend to do is going to be in the interest of you, the people of St. Martin. So on February 26, I'm asking you to vote for me and vote for the USP political party and give us that victory and let us see how we could rebuild this country 
in the interest of the people of St. Martin. Well, uh, MP Richardson, I want to thank you for coming and wish you much success with your party. All right? Thank you very much. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Till then, good night. Take care. Bye.